Hello, and welcome to this demonstration of CA's Continuous Delivery Director. CA Continuous Delivery Director is at the heart of the modern software factory. Its role is to take the concepts and ideas and then to push those through your pipeline to the point where your customers get value from those ideas and concepts. So when we talk about the modern software factory, as well as this initial idea of just moving concepts through to a factory to a final product, there's a, a wrapper of things that you have to do. There's the agility, the ability to do this in a way that's repeatable and quick, so you can rapidly make changes if required. And to do that, you need the automation. The automation is key to deploying high quality code into a production environment. But also there's the insight, understanding your releases, understanding not just the development cycle, but also what happens once you've actually deployed it and how your customers are using that product. And obviously doing this all in a secure way to ensure that you're deploying good quality code that's highly secure. So during the demonstration, we're going to show you how we can use CA Continuous Delivery Director to integrate with many tools. Uh, the product is actually built on our integration platform and as you can see here we have a large range of integrations that are currently in the product and many more have been added and you'll see many of these as we go for the demonstration uh, the product is a SaaS product and also an on-premise so it allows you to actually have a hybrid offering if you need it so the demonstration is going to show you how we can actually use continuous delivery director and some other tools such as blaze meter for our performance testing, we're going to use SourceLab for our UI testing, Vericode for our security testing, and how this whole process can be integrated into your existing toolset, and how we can drive automated testing. As you can see, 70% of all testing is still manual, uh, and this is a bottleneck when you start getting into high volume, high development cycles. So let's go on to the demonstration. So we're going to start our demonstration with, with our sample application. So this is the sample application. It's a simple raffle application, so you go to the, the website and you enter your details to enter our raffle. As you can see, I'm going to enter my raffle. Oh, and as you can see here, uh, the raffle doesn't appear to be working currently. And according to this, this text, it appears to be that this feature has not currently been implemented into our production stack. So let's go and look at our, our pipeline and understand where we are and why this feature hasn't currently been enabled in our production stack. So we're going to start by looking at the pipeline report within the CA CDD product. And what we see here is on the left hand side, you can see these lines here. Uh, these are actual user stories coming from Agile Central. So Agile Central is our tool that contains all of our user stories and is used to manage our development cycles. So we can see that we've got user story 63 here that is to enable the raffle submit button. And on this screen here, these are different phases or environments. So we can see that in development, we have these, these builds 285 that are deployed. Um, but also this external status is showing us that within Agile Central, uh, this story is complete. So from an engineering perspective, the actual story has been completed. Um, but if we go and look at our production stack, we're currently running an older version. So we haven't actually managed to push this into production yet. And on the right hand side, we actually see there is a scheduled deployment for today. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and actually look at that deployment and actually run it. And let's push this build into production. So we're going to click on the, the release. So what we're now looking at is uh, a release within CA CDD. And if we break it down to different sections on the left hand side here, we've got various things. So these items here are different applications. So within a release, we can deploy multiple applications at the same time. And this content here is actually coming from Agile Central. So the product is linked. So as a release manager, uh, I can see all of the, the tasks required to do my release, as well as how they're linked to stories in our Agile Central product. And you can see there, we've got our raffle submit button 63 is the top of this list. And then if you look at each of these columns, these are our phases, what we've got is all the tasks required to go through before we can get to production on the right hand side. So what we've got is to do our dev unit and API testing. Obviously we need to deploy our application. So that's deploying the application into Amazon Beanstalk, which is the, into the cloud. Then run API testing. And then if all works well, notify the development team. And then we do the same through 
UI functional testing, performance testing, security testing before we're ready to go into production. So let, let me show you how this works. So we're going to start the phase. Now this could be triggered from a build tool. So a tool like Jenkins could kick off this. We're going to do it manually for demonstration. So the first thing we're doing is we're picking up this build from wherever it is and we're deploying it into Amazon, deploying it into our pre-production environment in Amazon. And when it's deployed, we will automatically go to the next step, which in this case is to run our API testing. And if that passes, we have a very simple notify so the development team know that we've passed that. And you probably just saw at the bottom of the screen, uh, we had a Slack message to say that we've just deployed into development. And you'll see that as we go through the demonstration. So now we've moved on to the next phase, and the next phase is our functional testing. So we're going to redeploy the app again into a different environment. And when this completes, what we're going to do is we're going to use Source Lab to do our UI testing. And you can see that's just started. So if we go to our Source Lab UI and we just refresh this screen, what we'll see in you'll see the test starting. So you can see the, the very top line. Uh, the test has just started and what we're doing here is a very simple UI test and what we're testing for is is that submit button activated so source lab allows us to do testing for not just UI testing but also mobile testing and if I drill into that test what we'll see is we've actually gone to that URL we can see that's the the landing page we actually went to enter a, a test user and then we made sure that raffle worked which it did. If we go back to CDD, what's happened now is we've moved on from our UI testing into our performance testing. So again, we're now starting our performance testing within BlazeMeter. So let's go to BlazeMeter and see that test starting. So what we see here is there's our test. So, so BlazeMeter is a, a SaaS based product, but also you can run tests on premise as well as in the cloud. So you can choose to generate your load from any part of the world. So as you're doing your testing, you may be testing your North American systems from Asia. You may want to test some of your internal systems using on-prem agents, and that's fully configurable in the, in the product. In our example here, what we see down the bottom here is uh, we're using a location of Ohio, so in the east coast of the US. And when these tests initiate, we actually start up our agents and then we send it the, the test scripts we require. And then those test scripts will run on that agent against the target that we specified. Now in our example, what we want to do is we want to generate enough load to understand if the application can actually cater for the amount of expected traffic. So in our case, we're thinking we may get up to 200 people on our raffle site. So what we want to do is test up to 600. So we want to test 600 users. And what we're doing is we're actually creating synthetic users. We're injecting 600 virtual users into our raffle database and making sure that the not just the application, but the infrastructure can support that load. And as soon as this is finished, uh, the results are passed back to the CACDD product. And then we can promote through the next phases. So that's just about finished. Let's go back to CDD. And what we've done now is we've moved on to the final phase. So at this point, we know that the application actually works. We know that the UI is functioning, the button is working. We know that the application can actually take the load that we're expecting. And the final test is, you know, are there any security issues within the code that we're deploying that we need to be concerned about? So we've actually stopped here for a manual step. So within the Continuous Delivery Director product, we can mix automated and manual tasks. And the reason we do that is many customers still rely a lot on spreadsheets for this kind of release pipeline. So we can actually integrate into your manual tasks and your automated tasks in the same UI. So we're stopped on our Vericode. So let's go and look at our Vericode console. So we're going to go and log in. So again, Vericode is a SaaS product. And you can use Vericode in many ways. It can be used to scan your code as part of your IDE, or you can actually do secondary scanning. So we're going to show you a scan that we did earlier. So if we go to our results here, 
So we can see from our results that um, we have some warnings. And if we look at the report, what we can see is in this little graph, um, we're showing there's, there's a couple of mediums, a couple of lows and an information warning. So at this point, obviously from a, a code perspective, we know the actual application is working, but we are now aware of there are some vulnerabilities in that code that we should have a look at. And if we look at our findings and recommendations, we actually document what those are. So you can see here in this medium section, we have the, the error, what the problem is, a description of what it is, and also an understanding of how long we think it would take to resolve this issue. So in this case, we're saying it could be up to five days. And the second one, we're saying it could be just a day to fix it. Now, what we can show from this report is uh, when we go back to the business, we can show this pipeline and say, actually, no, we've done all our testing. And for the security testing, we do have some known problems. And these are those problems. Do the business want to take the risk uh, and mitigate that risk? So we can go into production or are we going to delay the release until we can actually resolve the problems? Uh, in our case, we're going to actually pass this on and actually approve this. So we're going to say we're, we're done. And what's now happened is um, that build is now ready. We're now ready to deploy into our Amazon stack and we're going to do that next. Now, as we said, this is scheduled. So normally this is just run automatically based on our schedule, uh, but we're going to run it manually. And what we've got here is a few tasks. Obviously, as we deploy into different environments, there are different things you need to do. So in production, you, know, you may need to disable your monitoring so that we don't get any false positives. You may then need to also update your change control systems. There are many things that have to happen in production. And they can be here as either manual or automated tasks. So we've got a few samples. We're going to disable the infrastructure monitoring, deploy the update, re-enable the monitoring, and then notify the teams but then also go and update Agile Central to say that this deployment is now in production. And we're then also going to look at the end user experience that we'll come back to in just a few seconds. So what we're going to do is deploy this. So straight away, we've actually disabled the infrastructure monitoring. Now we're doing the deployment. So as before, we're deploying this into Amazon. This is actually a different stack. Before we've been deploying into our pre-production. Now we're deploying into production. So now we're going to our live systems. And as soon as that's finished, we can then go and actually um, re-enable the infrastructure, as you can see here, notify our teams. You can see here, we notify the teams that we're now deployed that build into our production environment. And if we go back to our application, just refresh this. What we see now is um, this build number is now the build was just deployed. So this is now our production stack. And I can now enter the raffle. And if I do that a couple of times, so let's add, add two or three users to into our raffle. And then we go back to our admin screen. What we'll see is uh, the raffle system now working because as you can see here, those three entries have now been entered into our raffle. And if I click the and the winner is, um, we'll select three winners. See so our user one, two, three. So at this point, we know it's all working, but we have no idea of the end user experience. Now, we've now deployed this. This is typically where we would end in a development cycle. Now, the product's in production and it's running. Uh, we're going to now go and look at how we can actually look at what the end user experience is and how we can use that data to better develop our software. So we're going to go and look at our CAAXA product. So what, what we did during the demonstration is we actually had within the actual application um, hooks to send data back to the AXA product. And if we go to our data studio, we can look at our dashboard and we can change the filter to look over time. So let's look over the last 24 hours. And what we can see here, I'll just close that screen. We have lots of information about the end users that are using this website. So on the right hand side, as you can see there, we've got the different breakdown of platforms. So majority of people were using Apple iOS. We had a few Windows 7s, some generic Windows and some OS X. In the middle section, uh, a breakdown of browsers. So you can see we've got a mixture of IE, Firefox, Safari and Chrome. And also if you mouse over this, um, this is showing this is Chrome 57, Chrome 58, 
Chrome 59 and some Chrome 55. So from an engineering perspective, we now have a visibility of not just how many users are using the application we've just deployed, but also what they're using to access it, what browsers, what platforms, which better drives our testing strategies moving forward because we know the types of browsers and platforms being used by our customers. And if we go further down, you also see details on uh, page volume. Uh, we can integrate this actually within the application if it's an application within a mobile device to gather even more data from the actual device itself. And we can also get telemetry data. So where the actual users are actually coming from to do to use our product. So at this point, we've now deployed that into production. Uh, we have visibility of the end user using our product. If we go to our dashboard view within CDD, we're also going to look at the, the overall dashboard view for the whole of our deployments within the product. So on the left hand side here, we can see how many of our tasks are automated, how much time we're spending in automated tasks, how much time uh, manual, and also how the failure rates. So this is driving our you know, agile story within the, the organization. Now we'll be driving here for as much automation as possible so we can speed up the tool chain. And this is our dashboard view into not just uh, these you know, high level metrics, but also we can click on these ones to show how long we spend in each environment. So if we are spending time in a particular environment, that's where we should focus our attention to speed up that tool chain. Thank you for your time. If you'd like more information about CA's continuous testing story, please visit the URL on the screen. Thank you.